Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. It's the morning, about to go for a run, get a little workout in, let the kids play. We're going to do a lot of things on this episode of the Smalls RV Adventure. Stay tuned. We're also going to show you how to hook up two batteries in parallel to our solar system in the RV. But for now, I have to get up, do my morning hike before breakfast. Y'all ready to come with me? Yeah! All right, all right, let's go. This is one of the best parts. We getting up early. It's no sunset because it's cloudy, but we up early before everybody gets up. Running around, enjoying everything around here. Love to start the day with a little run, little workout, little minimum activity, but anything is good. What did they find over there? Matt can't go inside. There's a sign on the gate that says dog's not allowed, and he's pulling the heck out of me. He is strong. Grayson was like, can I go to the tennis court? I'm like, I don't care. It's early in the morning. You can run around and have fun. But I'm gonna finish my workout and get back to the trailer, finish on what I'm doing. And guys, thank you for tuning in. If you stuck around for all of these videos, the video's not over by the way, please hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. Hit the like button. It shows YouTube that the video is okay. You know, I'm not gonna say that it's great, but it's okay. Again, if you're one of the morning people that wake up with your kids to work out or just do some hikes, let me know. Tell me about your story in the comment section. Let me know. Now we're going to head back and continue our running because we don't have any tennis rackets. They just wanted to see the tennis court. Mac is still here. Dogs are not allowed in the tennis court, so we didn't take them inside of there. I'll show you the sign. So it says no dogs allowed, so... We try to obey the rules, even though there's no one out here. We love keeping the place clean. We love that they offer these dog bags. Does this area look familiar? I do a lot of my car camping over here. And like when I'm staying and cooking and preparing my food for the day, I do it right here in this area with this nice backdrop. It's so cool to have areas like this on the East Coast. It's not like Canada or the West Coast where everything is like rugged terrain. Most of the places here are paved. So it's, it's nice. It works out for a lot of people that don't have like the lifted vehicles and everything. You can get to nice locations and have nice scenery. So this is like super awesome. Let's look at this again. In the winter months, you can see the mountains in the back. Don't worry, I'll be back over here in the winter so that you guys can see it. But it's so cool like when all of the trees lose their leaves in the fall, you can see the mountaintops at the horizon. It's really nice. Right now you see the trees at the horizon. Still a pretty sight. Have any of you guys ever got bitten by those horse flies while you out here walking, hiking or running? Them things are like dragons. One bit me before it took off my skin. Yesterday it happened to my wife, bit her while she was walking, took the skin right off. Them things don't play. All right, we're back in the RV. Gotta cook some breakfast. Everybody's hungry. We're gonna use both battery power options, including this Markson G1500 that I absolutely love. I take this out whenever I'm gonna make coffee or toast some bread because I don't wanna trip the breaker. So I can just use this Markson because it has enough power where it will not reset because it has a surge of over 2000 watts. So it's really good. We have the Bella griddle plugged in, sure power. And we're gonna have the toaster and the coffee maker. Well, let me plug the coffee maker in now. So we're gonna have the coffee maker and a toaster hooked up to the Marks NG1500. Oh, 
dishes and eat. Everybody else, they, they outside playing. Yeah, she has to get her cereal too. Have this little bag waiting for her. You like those Fruit Loops? See, Daddy was thinking about you. The marks in this here at 94%. And recharge it from last time. It's pretty cool. Let's see how much this moves up. Woo! 2040 for the both sides there. That's a lot for this toaster. What's crazy is it stayed at 2000 watts. Yeah, this is a high drawing toaster from Betty Crocker. Toasted four pieces of bread. It's going over 2,000 watts. Well, it went down now, 1,400. Pretty cool, but that surge lasts a long time. Eggs are cooking up nicely. And turn that up just a little. I love having these electric griddles. These things work great on the power stations too. That's one that popped up. Oh, fire alarm. RV problems. Well, both pieces came up. Woo. We had that up a little bit too high, but we like it like that. Let's do our coffee now. Always get one really good. I don't know how this other one's gonna go. Oh, they be, got both of them. All right, this coffee, I'm gonna have to pour this in there. What was this thing on? I had it running on. Forgot to turn it off. Turn it off now. I have the coffee maker on and the toaster. It goes to show you how good this battery is. I had the coffee maker on. I just unplugged it from the last time and I had the toaster on and then this Markson was able to handle both the coffee maker and the toaster. If I tried to plug that into the RV by itself, it would have popped the circuit breaker. No problem right away. Right now, let's turn this back on. I wanna see the drawer. So this has a drawer of 600 watts. Hopefully I didn't break that coffee maker having it on that whole time. We would like some cheese on top of that. There's the second slice. Cheese it up, that's the way to go. Now everything went perfect. Let's see if I can scoop this egg up perfectly. I'm gonna have to put my finger in it a bit. Man, that's one right there. Nice and tasty. This is the Markson G1500. And just like that, breakfast is served. this powered by Markson. I'm gonna enjoy this. Mm. That came out really nice. I like having a banana too on the side. Fresh bananas. Mm -mm -mm. Don't mind that. That's the fridge. It does that from time to time. When the power is going down. Just to let me know that the power is going down, but it's fine. Everything is frozen inside. Mm-mm-mm. 
Look, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to continue on our day. This is something you all still have to try. Bananas on toast, buttered toast. Oh my God. Sometimes you sprinkle some sugar on top. Absolutely gorgeous. Your memories. Good. Good. I hope you guys were able to take advantage of those Amazon Prime Day sales. It's over now by the time this video comes out, but they had a lot of great sales where things were cut dramatically by 30 to 50% off. That was pretty cool. I did a lot of advertisement for this Markson G1500 portable power station. I hope some people picked that up. But if you haven't, you still have time to pick it up. I use it for most of the things that we use in the RV when we're off grid. And I can use it too when we go with the SUV. I plan to do that in the future. But this thing, it powers almost everything. In a future video, I'm going to show you how this marks in... Hello, Bummy. I'm going to show you how this marks in G1500 can power the entire RV. It's pretty cool because with its surge capacity, it can hold over 2,000 watts for a long period of time. So we're going to run all of these cool hydro tests. We're gonna see to show you that the microwave comes on and works. We're gonna to try to run the fans and the AC. The AC is the biggest kicker, but you don't know how long it will last, maybe 40 minutes to an hour, because that's a big draw. Every time you have like something like 2,000 watts, it's gonna last less than an hour continuous if you put it on the Markson. But if it has a low draw, it could be 500 that lasts a couple of hours. But most of the things you use in your RV, are really not high drawing things like the TV is only 40 watts a radio is like less than that if you charge your cell phone it's only like 10 watts the refrigerator 12 volt fridge when the compressor is activated to keep it cold that's only about 40 watts but it comes on and it goes off it doesn't what are you talking about he's over here singing into the phone you want to say something now she's shy but yeah, the compressor only kicks on a little bit and then it goes off. So it doesn't take up much power. In fact, I'm gonna show you guys the, the battery system that we hooked up in parallel. We're gonna make the terminal connections just to connect the two batteries together in parallel. Here we have two gauge wire and some two gauge wire terminals along with the heat shrinking. We don't need much of this wire. And look at that, it's true two gauge. Look how much copper is inside of there. That's a lot. Probably doesn't show from the camera, but this is really thick wire, not much flex. All right, this thing, you just crimp the wire. I, uh, I put this close up so I know how much to crimp off and you just cut the wire out. For me, I just go along ever so gently around the sides until I can feel the wire and then I just strip it off. All right, got these things exposed. You have to make sure you get all of these in here. <laughs> Once you get everything inside, you just fit that in there and then you crimp it down. All right. Once you have it in, you just crimp it. Gonna have to have some energy here. I like to make sure that this is as in as much as I can get it in, which it is. And then you just crimp down. Use your man powers or women powers, whatever you have, and rah, it's in. So that's your crimp. Once you get your crimp on, you want to make sure that it's on there nice and tight. Then you cover it with your heat shrink. Now remember with the heat shrink, you want as a little nudge in there. You want to get the heat shrink over that. So just in case the wire ever comes off, it comes it loose, this will hold it intact so it can't budge, so it won't come off. Now here we go. This is the heat shrink. Remember when you shrink it, you want to do each side. I do have a heat gun, but I didn't want to go get it, I'm lazy, so that's why I'm doing it this way. When you're putting on your other side, you want to make sure that is the same way as the other one. You, you see how it's like this and this? 
you don't want to have it like this on there so you want to make sure when you put it in and make sure all of the strands are in that it's like this so when you put it onto your battery you can just put it on and it's not like that because remember these are two gauge wires there's not much flex in them all right these are the battery connectors with the terminals at the end i'm going to go install them now all right this is the second battery from markson let's install it these are the batteries next to each other you just have to remember to shut the power off here we go that's all of the power being depleted you see it going down here that's taking the power from there and we're going to leave it like that for a day as we can connect both of these terminals together easy to connect in parallel remember the black stays to the black the red stays to the red very easy all right it's that simple everything is hooked up in parallel remember we have the wire coming from your battery box over here well the the sort of where the major components are where you have your lead negative and positive coming off you have it coming to one battery for the positive and you have it going to the other battery for the negative so that if there's any problems you know the you'll see something not working if these connections come loose somehow which they shouldn't but that's it that was how we hooked up the battery in parallel it's been sitting for over 24 hours so the batteries can balance itself out then we just plugged it back in but i'll show you how the system looks now so this is basically where everything is housed this is underneath the bed you cannot see it when you're not in the rv this is where we store our marks in portable power station the g1500 and these are the two marks in gel batteries hooked up in parallel we let it sit for 24 hours here's the noco charger and here's the inverter everything looks all jumbled up in here but it's all working fine these wires are what you don't see i'll show you what you do see when you're in the rv so again as you come into an rv you're not going to see any of the wires because it's housed under the bed we have our plug socket there that's hooked up to the inverter and then as i showed you last time on the side of the bed here's where the 12 volt plug and the usb outlets are there's no wires to be seen and then there's a noco battery charger you can't see it i just point to it it's on the side of this fridge but you can't see it and that's how we keep the batteries charged when we're on shore power so far the setup has been working out and i check it every time we stop somewhere when we're on the road I'm going to show you guys in a future video how you can hook this system up under the bed to power your whole RV. It's the same as the portable power station, the way that that works. It works the same. I may show it in the same video or another video, but it won't be this video. All right, this video is getting a little bit long. I'm going to let you guys go here. Check out our next video. I'll probably be showing you how to hook the portable power station up to power everything in a rig. I'm also going to show you again how we can use our battery system that we have installed under the bed to power everything in a rig. It is so cool and I'm still adding things to the battery system. I'm waiting for some things to come in the mail to make it more better. And again, I'm showing you guys easy step-by-step -step things to do. Save you guys some money while you're doing it in the process of this lifestyle. And continue, please, watching the videos with the SUVs and a tent camping we love it and i'm happy to have you guys go through this journey with us it just makes me feel really grateful and appreciative of you guys because if you guys wasn't watching i wouldn't have the channel so thank you so much and make sure please to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we put up new videos you try to talk and say what i'm saying yeah. yes all right guys see you later bye, bye.